Welcome to We Are One. Today we have a special Eu session for you. Ver. Here, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your host, Alessander Palma. Super happy to be here with you all. With Jules Arias, our instructor from Spain. With Jill Marie Pasquinelli from California, United States. And Mona Harris from Germany. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, you Alan. <laughs> We are so happy. We were just saying that this has been a wonderful year. Uh, on March 25th, it was our first We Are One last year. And we've been so blessed to share this time and this space with our community from all over the world. What an opportunity this has been. Thank you for being with us and sharing this journey. Uh, sharing the art of Jin Shin Jitsu with yourself, with your family and friends in these challenging moments. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Super glad for this year. So today we were also talking about the change of seasons. And uh, as spring is about... Uh, has already started in the northern her, her hemisphere <laughs> and uh, spring and spring there and autumn here in the southern hem hemisphere. So what do you plan to share with us about this change of seasons? Mona? <laughs> That was the texture of third depth, you know, there was nothing, we weren't talking. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, listening. Spring, this explosion of the plants, at least here right now. And it reminds me of our third depth, of the attitude of third depth, in harmony or in disharmony, which is the middle finger. And so I love the first two mudras, you know, this one to help exhale, the thumb on the front of the middle finger, the other fingers on the back to help exhale and drop our shoulders. And let this third depth energy come down to us from six steps. We had snow here until a few days ago, so it's really this new beginning. And if we put the thumb on the back side of the middle finger, and we help the inhale from the toes to the head to receive this new energy. The purified energy. To be in tune with this new vibration. You can do both mudras on both hands. And if you have the feeling you need more of letting go and exhaling, you can focus on the one where you have your thumb on the front of on the palm side. And you have the if you have the impression you need more regenerating energy, you can put the thumb on the back side that helps your inhale that helps you to receive that helps your grass to grow faster <laughs> how wonderful what about you choose what do you what is present in your heart for the change of the seasons 
I was just, I was holding this uh, mudra and it came to me that we go through changes all the time. We change in seasons every year. Uh, whether we are in the Northern Hemisphere or in the Southern Hemisphere, we're going to experience the changes. Nature is going to change before our eyes. And here in Spain, as we say, it's, it's now spring. So I've been looking at a tree that I've got outside in my garden. And obviously the tree was, uh, was cut, or the branches were cut before at the beginning of winter. And I'm wondering, is it going to come up again? Because I know it's huge. It's a huge tree in my garden. But now, right now, I can see only the, the bare trunk. So it gives me that feeling of every year comes renovation. With the changing in seasons, we, we go through stages. Also, we go through seasons in our lives, in our day. And I was thinking, adapting to the change? How can we adapt to the change? We know that in Jinsu in Jinsu, we say we're adapting through, through the breath and the digestive system. And because Mona has started with mudras, and I'm a, an absolute mudra fan, I thought of this mudra, this mudra for adapting as well, putting the thumb over the ring, the nail of the ring finger. And this is a mudra that we can hold, it's the only one we can use, do it on both sides, the right hand and the left hand at the same time. And uh, it's amazing because it's a simple gesture that can help us adapt. Adapt to changes like now, changing seasons, adapt to one year of being in a situation that uh, it looks like, uh, well, it happened a long time ago, even one year seems to be more than a year when I think of March last year, you know what I mean? It has stretched and, and we need to continue to breathing in this situation, in this happening in the now, and this mudra can help us with that. It can help us adapt, it can help us with for instance, if we are in, the, uh, in an area where the spring is happening now and we have all these allergies, spring allergies, it can help us breathe easier. It can help us go upstairs and go and climb an, a mountain and we will breathe easier as well. So we can experience this mudra and use it at this time of change, whether it's from spring from winter to spring or from all the season, if we are somewhere else in this beautiful earth. And, and this will help us inhaling, helps mm -hmm. the energy going up, it helps us breathe in the inhalation, exhalation is a cycle that takes place at the same time but it will support the inhaling aspect of the breath, this mudra. How wonderful. Oh. And we can, can we rest our hands like Absolutely. Here? And uh, you can put your hands on your lap or you can, sometimes I lie down in bed and I hold this mudra and uh, I go in. Mudras help me go inwards and uh, Sometimes you want to be inward, holding your mudras. How wonderful. For, mm -hmm. for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, this is also going to help us to breathe all the respiratory adaptation that mm -hmm. goes on with, with the Ottoman as well. Mm -hmm. We have the energy of our umbilicus also, and umbilicus is, will nurture us diaphragm and umbilicus, both of them will help both, but will help that energy of nurturing ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. Amazing. And Joe, what, what comes to your mind when we talk about mm. the, of the seasons? Well, um, this is a real spring for me in that on Saturday, my first granddaughter 
my first grandchild was born, Skylar May. And we left at four in the morning, San Rafael, to drive to Seattle. She was born at 6.11. And it was a full moon at dawn. Mm -hmm. And it was such a beautiful drive. Um, it was amazing. There were so many flowers. The sky was beautiful. Mount Shasta was in full glory you know you could see all of Mount Shasta the trees it was sunny it was warm it, it was just spring in all of its glory and uh, you, for me I was it was amazing um, such an expression you know spring is the life process reawakening and we're coming out of the stasis of winter you know, so that it requires a lot of energy. And that is why sometimes in spring we can feel tired, you know, requires a tremendous amount of energy for all of that growth and expansion. And so I think um, the 22s come to mind. And adaptation helps us to be where we are how we are, who we are in this moment. Also, the 22s help us to adapt to altitude changes and any kind of change really in our lives. And the changing of the seasons is about change. And as Chu said, we go through the change of seasons every day in our daily 24-hour cycle. Excuse me. <laughs> Hello. Lots of energy. <laughs> They're going through changes too. <laughs> that is also certain, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and the other flow that comes to mind for me that of course has to do with change and movement life is continual motion is the self-help mediator and so the tree pose you can you know your right hand can go on your left 11 3 you make a circle with your thumb on top of your left ring fingernail and you can either bring your ones together the insides of your knees or the arch of your right foot the six can go to the inner left knee, the one, however you prefer to do it. And this is delicious. This just feels so great. I think that's going on. Even the relationships, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> and you will do a spring cleaning in our system because you said <laughs> chemical river of life in the sense that can be a deep cleanser, mediator. And we say when uh, spring and autumn can be good times for uh, cleansing. And it helps us to be in the river and rhythm of life. The mediator is a rhythm. And I feel my breath changing as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that precious? Yes. And we are also curious for those of you who are watching us. We've been here offering self-help tips 
for, for more than a year now. And we would like to ask you how you are and what are the challenges or the projects that you're facing? And we can talk about them and give you tips. Please use the chat to let us know what uh, topics would be helpful for you in this moment. And we can share many perspectives for these projects. Well, Leslie is saying she's looking, she's looking out over the mm. ocean, watching the rhythm, mm. so being in the rhythm, beautiful. Mm. Mm. And if you like, you can change sides oh. with the mediator. You know, for me, mm -hmm. uh, this helps me to regain my inner peace. You know, uh, there are some days that we're feeling better, some days that are more challenging. Does the mediator have this ability of helping us move in turbulent waters? It helps us to surf oh. <laughs> in those turbulent waters. <laughs> We surf with the waves, you know, we go with the rhythm, we go with the movement. And if we notice that we're resisting, we can breathe, drop our shoulders, and just be in what is. Being in what is. We have a lot of questions there now, Ali. <laughs> I'm sorry. The moment you, you say, tell us and ask, we have a lot of questions here already waiting for us. Yes, wonderful. Mm. So I hear, I hear a question, I see a question here, that many people are dealing with grief right now, <laughs> either loneliness, uh, being by themselves, or the grief um, for the losses in, we've, had, we've been experiencing. So what would be your suggestions? Well, we started with this one, which is a great mm -hmm. Or just holding the whole finger, but this really is, is good. You mm -hmm. can do it on both sides at the same time, and it just helps you to come into the now, to relax, and it, it soothes you. Mm -hmm. Any other possibilities? Choose, Jill. I, I think about the high 19, the upper arm, and the inside of the opposite, the high one. So the one is the inside of the knee. You come up about three inches. And this really helps to open the chest, open the breathing, drop our shoulders, and breathe into it. Grief, grief is a vast land, that's what I like to say, you know, and to just be in it and, um, and breathe into it. This is very comforting. Mm. Any suggestions, choose. You know, when we're in grief, we we often feel like we don't know if we're going to get out or it could last forever. But if we just have a little courage and and feel feel it, be there, it will pass like everything else.
any additions, Charles? I was thinking uh, when we identify grief, the attitude um, with second death, and uh, sometimes we have a difficulty putting an end to things in life or seeing the ending as a new seed, the, the seed for a new beginning. And in that sense, I like safety lock nine as well, which is the same position. We could go a little bit down on the elbows and just hold the elbows because nine um, will help us digest the situation. Sometimes we have things undigested. We with grief because we feel that we don't have a chance to say something or we didn't do enough or we, we always our mind is creating all these stories about the passing of that person or the loss of that that we've lost and we grieve for so nine helps me digest and put an end and see the seed of a new beginning and bring the joy for what I've had with that person or in that situation and be able to move. Mm. So like the nines, holding the elbows helps me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it opens right. up my paper and then I feel nourished again. It's very comforting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as we hold the 19, mm -hmm. there, there are questions about anxiety here in the chat. Mm -hmm. Because with the unknown, the, the, the changes that happen all the time. And I know we've been mm -hmm. talking a lot about this, but right now, what would be your suggestions? You know, I, I think of the thumb for anxiety. The thumb is very calming. It's our stomach and spleen. Anxiety often has to do with first steps, can also be fourth steps. But the spleen is the the sun god, known in ancient anatomy as the sun god, and is the leader of relaxation in the body. It affects the nervous system. And so holding your thumb anywhere, if you're feeling anxious at family functions, <laughs> at, you, you know, <laughs> at work, in a meeting, Anywhere you may feel anxious, nervous, the thumb is really calming. It's the element of earth, first depth, so it's also very grounding. <clears throat> And when you hold the thumb, you're harmonizing the one, mm -hmm. which brings you into movement, maybe out of this anxiety. <clears throat> it harmonizes the nine that Chus was talking about, end of a cycle, beginning of a new one. And at the same time, the 19s that we were holding mm -hmm. for our authority. Not to mention the 21. <laughs> Let's go mental bondage. <laughs> we often think anxiety is something that happens mm -hmm. to us. It's only the result of being not in the now. Mm -hmm. The message of missing Jesus now, no must perf. The now is all there is. So when I'm not in the now, I'm either mm -hmm. going back to the past 
or projecting myself into the future is when I can experience anxiety. So if I if I experience it now, I can hold the center palm of the hand as well, or anything helping main central vertical. And that will bring me back to my center. In that center, there is no anxiety. That's the root in the philosophy of <laughs> That's the very yeah. root of Jiu-Jitsu, isn't it? No, Me. no, no. We also have some questions here about uh, post-traumatic stress. And I read uh, an article saying that the situation of, uh, that, that we are in, that we don't know what's going to to happen in the short term, it uh, it would be equal as uh, a continued stress. And some people are having post-traumatic stress just to get out in the streets or going to, to the supermarket with anxiety and panic attacks. And what, what would be your suggestion? I know Jill has a special topic about mm -hmm. that, so I'm going to ask mm -hmm. you first. <laughs> <laughs> well, post-traumatic stress, you know, I honestly think we all have some PTSD living through this pandemic, living through what's going on in the world. Um, it's it's a, an amazing time. And so one of my favorite holds self-help for PTSD, <clears throat> excuse me, is the left 23 with the left hand and the right high one, I mean, excuse me, the left high one with the right hand. So you're on the same side, the 23, you follow the bottom rib around, your 12th rib around to the back. That's where the 23 is located. So the left 23 and the left high one for PTSD. And, you know, the thing about post-traumatic stress is that we can be aware of it, we can work with it mentally, psychologically, but what happens is it, it gets into the tissue, it's in the body. And so we have to address it through the body. You know, all the other things are great, but we do need to also address it through the body. Choose. I was thinking that we all put labels to different types of stresses, okay? But it's a stress, we are stressed, whether it's from a trauma in the past or in the present or... And 23, it takes care of all of them because behind that is fear. So anything that we, we can help fear with in Jin Jitsu, whether it's 23 or simply the index finger, it's going to help all types of stress. Thank you. Holding the index finger is so dynamic. It helps so many uh, safety energy locks as well as the attitude of fear, which is the root of all attitudes, right? Mm -hmm. Anything you'd like to share also, Mona? Well, she took my finger away. Share. <laughs> <laughs> one. This is my finger too. <laughs> Our finger, Mona. Do you know you can hold both index fingers at the same time? Oh. <laughs> this is new. <laughs> this is new. <laughs> And I love it because uh, the index finger harmonizes our safety energy lock 10, which talks about abundance. And when we're in fear, 
the abundance is missing. And it also talks, it also helps safety energy log 11, which talks about mm -hmm. letting go of excess baggage, mm -hmm. which actually fear is, you know, we don't feel it in that moment, but the index finger will remind us. And 22, which we all have been holding, which means also happy and content wherever you are. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, Many it's, from a simple practice. Hmm. As we harmonize fear, it's about being in the flow and not just being in the flow, but allowing life to flow through us. Hmm. And I imagine this can be supportive of tensions or people were asking about uh, tensions in the shoulders and in the back, being sitting in front of computers mm -hmm. all the time. We had even a special session with Jill uh, some time ago. She was talking about the stress on being on Zoom all the time. So <laughs> this is helpful, right? Yes, yes, very much. <laughs> Any other perspectives for this uh, for this adaptation that goes into being in front of screens all the day? You know, um, so fear is kind of hardwired into us. It's part of our defense system. It's part of the old brain. And, you know, it's very important, a little exercise that I do, and I actually teach in my classes a lot, is we need to rewire the brain so we need to we need to um we need to remember the positive experiences from the day so every night when i go to bed i think of what was the happiest part of my day and i i really sit in that you know and I remember it, I feel it in my body, and that's the beginning of the rewiring. So another self-help that I think is really helpful for that is 11 and 15, because 15 is happiness and joy. And 15 is here right in the groin where the leg uh, creases, right? So 11 and 15, dropping our shoulders, letting go of all the burdens, all the stresses in life, all that we carry around. And 15, as the 11s open, the 15s are also opening happiness and joy. And changing focus, 15s are about changing focus, so. I don't know about you, but I could stay here all day yeah. long. So how <laughs> it is. Absolutely. And it's been a while. We're way past our time. And I'm so <laughs> thankful to share this moment with you. And I appreciate all the questions and comments. I'm going to forward them to the instructors to inspire them. For future, we are ones uh, in, in the upcoming uh, weeks all right yeah. so this has been such a blessing thank you for your availability your generosity of sharing your time your wisdom with us and i'm sure that everyone that at home is feeling a little more in the now more relaxed and breathing from head to toes from toes to the head in a more aware way thank you so much mm -hmm. Thank you, Ali. Thank you, Ali. And all of you, my colleagues. Yes. But also say to those who have the questions not answered, any of the things that we practice here today could help you with those questions. Because in the oneness of this in Jitsu, these mudras, everything that we share today 
you could apply to your question if you haven't had the time to answer you directly. Don't you think so? Yes. Mona? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's just one circulation, right? It all comes back to oneness. So everything that you practice helps the one. Absolutely. Exactly. Beautiful. Yes. It's wonderful. Thank, Thank you, everyone. You. It's been wonderful being with you. Blessing.